If you would have asked somebody at the beginning of the 1960s, will there be man on the moon by the end of the decade, most people probably would have told you like, what, you're crazy? But people managed to do that as well. And we have the technology, it's now about just the pace of the implementation. According to this research, I said we only have about or seven years left. And why do you think the companies hesitate to make a better plans? Why they think 2035 and 40 is the best year for them? I mean, for many years, the, the, the car industry has known about climate change and the problem and the role they play with the products that they sell for many years. I mean, we've done an investigation in Germany. We've uh, shown and published there that the uh, board of VW discussed this at the beginning of the 80s. There was one uh, person in the board who was like, okay, we could use this uh, in, in a discussion also publicly. And the others were like, no, 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 we're not going to do this. Otherwise, environmentalists will push back at us and they will talk about speed limits or so to reduce the consumption of cars. So this has been known in the industry for decades. Similar to the oil industry who was like actively like sort of like disseminating false information and try uh, running campaigns to prevent meaningful uh, action. The, uh, the industry at a, a very critical point, they've invested lots of money, millions and sometimes billions into the development of technical platforms where they uh, for internal combustion engine cars where they build all their different models on. So that when they develop such a new platform, they count on selling millions of cars to actually uh, get back this, uh, these development costs, then make a profit. So they are a little bit in a bind because they want to make profit of what they invested in, in earlier and some of them are still planning on investing to further develop the internal combustion engine car. So that's, that's one problem and that's also what we are flagging here, that this ice bubble, you, they will run into potentially stranded assets because if uh, governments really make sure that we stay at this level, then anybody who is like uh, invested in developing future internal combustion engine cars or didn't refit their factory is looking at stranded assets and it's gonna, it's gonna lose money. The other aspect is that uh, some of the well-established car companies have a fear, I think, that they will lose market share. But um, we've seen uh, lots of new competitors rise, Tesla being the uh, most prominent example, but also other companies. And obviously that is also manufacturers, like the big traditional established manufacturers, didn't take this serious, tried to push it away, and now are sort of caught in, in, in between a little bit. And, yeah, that's, I think, where they are caught now. Even the ones that have, like Hyundai Kia or VW, have electric vehicle platforms are like at the top of, of the market, but they transition too slowly uh, their factory, so they're maxing out the production capacity for their battery electric vehicles. They still want to sell their ICE cars and make profits of them, so they're caught in a bind there. But I think it's, it's if you look at these numbers, it becomes very clear. This ICE bubble, think about it in one of two ways. Either, either um, governments limit the sales here and then every, anybody who's too slow in transitioning will lose uh, money because they have looking at stranded assets or market share. Or if we uh, don't manage that, then we are looking at a significant, like let's call it a carbon bump because it's gigatons of extra emissions. Yeah, just drive uh, global heating and, and climate change. Oh, in that context, I think government is very critical and in this transitions because like I think government can remit a lot of emissions just by uh, a lot of regulations so is what is what is the rule of the government and in Korea or Germany or as you mentioned uh, the, the internal combustion engines is highly complicated com compared to other vehicles so they require a lot of history they they need a very uh, high comp highly uh, developed technology so I think it's very very hard to abandon them just 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 by uh, seven or eight years so we need to persuade them EV cars are more profitable and it is needed so how can government change the market like in other um, areas as well the, the important role there is that they set clear guidelines so we know very clearly from climate scientists okay, how fa fast do we have to phase out the internal combustion engine? And then it would be very easy for governments, and some of them uh, do that, to take this as the basis and just um, say, okay, after this point, we will not allow the sale of new uh, petrol or diesel cars, cars with an internal combustion engine. 
Some governments have done so, most uh, recently Europe, um, the, the EU, the uh, entire region, uh, passed uh, regulation that they will phase out the inter uh, new cars and new vans with an internal combustion engine by 2035. That's still five years uh, too late, obviously, and we're pushing also that they go faster, and some governments want to go faster. Netherlands, Denmark want to phase out by 2030. But it's a very important sign for the, for the consumers and for the industry. It's, it's clear, okay, internal combustion engine, it's an outdated technology. We have to focus all our efforts on, on this transition. And, and that's the, the role of government can play. The president, uh, President Yoon, in, I think on the campaign trail, made a promise that he would phase out the internal combustion engine uh, by 2035 in Korea. I don't think we've heard anything since, so it's very important there as well. Like, makes clear rules so everybody, you like here, but also its competitors know um, uh, what's going on. Um, and ideally do this five years earlier, uh, so we tr transition in a speed that avoids us to go beyond 1.5 degrees heating. You're, you're right, I think governments need to send a signal, a very, very powerful signal to the market, so that they can change their preference. But in the other side, even though governments send a very strong message to the market, uh, what if the consumers never change? I mean, I do understand a lot of citizens and the people care a lot about the climate change and the earth and sustainability. But there are a lot of people who don't, who don't want to think about it. So how do we campaign that? How do we portray them? In the beginning, and then that's quite normal that people, there's like a new technology, it works slightly different than what we did before. So you have to charge, Charging maybe takes a little longer um, than if you fill up a petrol car at a gas station, but I can charge at home as well if I, if I have the possibility. So people have to adjust a little bit that it's uh, different. In Germany also, people questioning in the beginning, is this really a feasible transition? Is this better for the environment? They were obviously the voice or the, the actors that profit from the current system, driving doubt whether this was uh, possible. I don't know the numbers uh, for Korea, but like in Germany, like, as I mentioned before, if you want to get a battery electric car, you have to wait for a year or sometimes longer. I think Teslas and, and Hyundai Kia, uh, vehicles from Hyundai Kia, you need a little less than, than some of their competitors. So they are actually increasing their market share in Germany and Europe. But it's still, you have to wait for a very long time. And, and this is a clear indicator that we are now um, sort of like on the way to transitioning. What's now very important is to sp that we speed up this transition. If we would be more ambitious and if we act more early, we can organizedly change our emission, right? Now we are at about one degree uh, global warming, a little over uh, one degree, and we are already seeing significant oh. consequences. Extreme weather events like extreme rainfalls. I mean, we had that in Germany and, and in Korea as well with, with people dying. I mean, even in industrialized countries, that should be well prepared. I mean, we've known about climate change for so long now, but as a, a global community dragged our feet and were very slow on starting to decarbonize the electricity sector and in other sectors. So the time is getting shorter and shorter. And obviously it gets more ambitious in all sectors. 